Hey everyone, welcome to Artist Talks. I'm with Reagan Cosper and Antonio Permui. I'm Dana Blickensurfer and we are here today. We have an exciting show for you. We are talking about the collegiate world in the art world and how that's intertwined for students and artists. We have an artist, former USF student and now a curator. And we have Reagan here, but before we get started, we have an exciting little game we want to play, a little icebreaker to start things off. Do you want to explain the rules? Yeah, so pretty much me and Antonio are going to try to paint each other's portraits using three uh -oh. colors oh. and two paintbrushes. Yeah, one medium and one small. Mm -hmm. And you have three minutes. So for this part, I want everyone to see you, so you might have to like get a little interactive. Here's your brushes. So this is the fun challenge. You can make that. <laughs> okay. You got a really tiny one. <laughs> so we have three, um, two, three colors, one accent color, the blue. I'm just gonna chill. These are pretty. Okay. I'm gonna watch the timer. All right, you ready? Okay. Sure. On your mark? Arms and ready. Get set, <laughs> go. All right. Make sure not to push too hard because this might fall back. Okay. Noted. Three minutes. This is staging, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have three minutes. Oh, look at you already getting wisp. She's doing the wispy brush strokes. <laughs> I've never been so nervous in my life. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. You're not gonna have a face. You're just gonna have a head. It's abstract. <laughs> it's all an illusion. Did you check out the new augmented reality exhibition at the Dolly? I did. I was actually speaking with some of their people. Oh, what, you did? <laughs> you spoke? Uh, not, no, I didn't speak at it, but I was talking to some of their Oh, about team, it. Okay. Uh, and they were telling me some cool, I got a bit of a heads up on it. Oh, so I'm it's, excited. It's a really, yeah, it's, it's very cutting edge what they're doing over there. And, uh, and do you live in St. Pete? I do. Well, now I do, yeah. Okay. So full-time artist in St. Pete, from curating, Miami. making things from Miami. Oh, my brother was in Brickell. Oh, really? Yeah, so I go to Miami. Do you go to Art Basel every year? Um, not there? every year, because a lot of times I'm here when it happens. Yeah. Um, but I actually, my aunt lives in Brickell, so yeah, it's a great area. And uh, You have a it's... minute and a half. Yeah, it is a beautiful area. I, I find myself like doing a lot of like shows and collaborations in Miami. Oh, really? Less in St. Pete and more in Miami, which is why I think the art, artist talks is a great show to connect and collaborate and start to engage in our community on a different level, which is what I'm excited about. How much time? Like 40 seconds. Okay. I swear, Antonio, if I'm not beautiful. Oh, you won't be. <laughs> we won't continue this This interview. is me, after all, doing it. 30 <laughs> seconds. I don't go for beautiful. <laughs> I go for interesting. <laughs> this is going to be really interesting. 20 seconds. I feel the, I feel the intensity. You're not blonde here. <laughs> Neither are you. <laughs> Blue. Okay, but... Blue likes my emotions. All right, three, uh, five, four, three, two, one, stop! Okay. All right. All right, let me see. Let I don't know what I just did, <laughs> but it's not boring. Oh my God, I love that. That is really great. Look at this. Okay. You have to come over. Are you ready? Oh. I'm gonna oh show it to you. Oh my God, that actually looks like me. Oh yeah, you can see it. They see it. Well, I think uh, it looks oh, like Jesus is... with glasses. <laughs> Which looks like me. <laughs> and this? Look Okay. Yeah, no, this is the only thing I could pull off halfway decently. But so it's, um, okay. Don't ask me to differentiate the different parts of you, but it's this is you. I was I thinking it. of you when I did it. Is it the full body or is it the head? Um, it's, it looks it's, like it's a, the body. Yeah, it's an amalgamation. <laughs> it's probably the best Very ambiguous way to put it. But yeah, these are your <laughs> eyebrows. I'm sorry, that is one. <laughs> that, that is, is one. yes. I was thinking very Frida Kahlo version. Oh, I love Frida. What are you trying to say? Yeah. 
telling you. I'm saying that you're not pretty callow, but if you were, it'd look a bit like that. Well, you did awesome. Great job. Thank you. The Thank portraits you. were a success. <laughs> I would, I thought the figure, bringing the figure was a nice surprise. I didn't think he'd do that with the, yeah. the Frida inspired, surrealistic. Thinking outside of the box. Oh, really yes. awesome. <laughs> Thank Creative you. mind over here. I'm looking forward to learning more about you. Thank you. Plus, Me too. <laughs> what am I going to say? <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, so you're the founder of the collection, which is the art club at University of South Florida, but in St. Pete. Correct. Um, so you were telling us earlier that they didn't have an art club for like 50 years. So what inspired you to like finally bring it on? Ooh, okay. Well, yeah, the, the campus has been around and it's been an important part of the St. Pete community for a really long time. It's over 50 years. Um, so I did some research into it. There's some people there who actually have been there the full length of the university has existed, believe it or not. There's wow. at least one, Crazy. maybe two people who've been there that full extent of time. Um, so I checked with them to confirm. That's awesome. And there was a very short-lived art history club that was around for maybe a full year, maybe. Oh. But they weren't dedicated to the making of art. It was just a purely academic thing. And it wasn't all-inclusive. So if you weren't an art historian, you weren't really welcome there. Oh no. Uh, and this was maybe... It's frowned upon. Yeah. No creative. Right. Just exactly. Historian. Yeah, an art history club? Why? <laughs> but yeah. Allowed. Yeah. So it, it's, it was, um, when I heard about that and I thought, what a wasted, lost opportunity. Um, so I thought, uh, at the time I was in student government and... What uh, year were you? When you, this epiphany... I want to say that I was maybe at the end of my first year, okay. maybe beginning of so my second year. It's only a sophomore, year. no. If not, it may have been at the tail end of my, of my freshman year. a leader year. right there, <laughs> leader of the pack. He's a poli-sci major. Yeah, I, was, so I graduated with political science, <laughs> okay. so yeah, um, and I was in student government at the time, so I remember thinking, um, I had my fill, I did that for a year, and I was already thinking towards the end of my term, what do I want to do next? And I thought to myself um, that another way could have a huge impact on campus and really in any community is by really jumping into it, not just sitting away and kind of watching things from this, you know, council board thing, but actually getting in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a key part of it. Because a key thing that brought me to St. Pete and brought me to um, USF was the degree of arts that are, you know, around in St. Pete and throughout Tampa Bay, uh, even, you know, Sarasota, Clearwater, Tampa, of course. Um, so it was a bit like a reverse oasis, kind of like a desert island kind of, uh, which is the opposite of what you expect. You all this art flourishing, know, and there wasn't very much on campus. I can see. So I wanted to create an art community driven by students, not so much where the administration would do things for students, but actually creating a community the students themselves could participate like in. Like by the students for the artists. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and also to help students get in touch with their creative side. Even if you were an accounting major, even if you were a biology major, you didn't see yourself as an artist. I wanted to show that all art was valid. That's cool. So get in touch with your creative side. And a lot of times people would tell me, well, you know, I'm just not creative. And I would say that's BS. Yeah. And here's why. If you dream, you're creative. Because mm -hmm. when you dream, and everybody dreams, you're completely getting in touch with your unconscious self at that point in time. It's very psychological, but everybody has an unconscious mind. And that's where our creativity spawns from, mm -hmm. which is what informed the surrealist. It's what informed the Dadaists. A lot of it was informed by uh, psychology of Freud, psychology of, of Carl Jung. Mm -hmm. Uh, so all of that went into this and in creating uh, what's now a thriving art, uh, art culture in our university. Around the time that we started that club, it had an enormous impact. It became award-winning. The university hired an art consultant uh, wow. to purchase major works of art, and they've spent in well their, over in their, um, in the campus. Uh, well, not so much the uh, the classrooms, but more so um, when you walk into. Let me put it this oh, way: the main, the when main. You, when you walked on campus yeah. when we first started, it looked like a military barracks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so now you have murals, you have you know all kinds of really Sculpture? impressive. Yes, awesome. definitely. So there was none of that before, or very little of it. It was That's mostly contained. And you kind of initiated all that. I'm not going to take full credit for it. The university does deserve credit for seeing an opportunity of there. Course. But I don't know if they would have invested the money into not just hiring the position, but also in the artworks that she's pushing. Her name's Ann Wykel. Uh, <laughs> but also, yeah, frankly, and she started an art newsletter Reagan was a part of uh, for students and faculty. I don't know if the university would have taken those steps if the students hadn't shown a willingness to create an art culture. And she's currently there running yes. the, that's amazing. Yes, and actually, another major inspiration for starting the art club um, is actually very personal to me because my family, I mentioned them from Miami, 
my family uh, in Miami, uh, my grandparents, I think, is where it started. They came from Cuba during the Cuban Revolution, oh. and they started one of, if not the first, Cuban art gallery in South Florida. It was really? historic. And it was, um, when you think about the culture that existed at that time in the early 1970s, late 1960s, um, there's a lot of very successful artists who were trained in Europe. Some of them knew Picasso, and some of them knew some of the leading artists of that time. But the moment that their country changed so dramatically politically, and they came to a new country, their degrees were meaningless. Yes, everything they had no lost. Exactly, they had no base. Like a doctor, and they come over here, it's nothing. Right, yeah, you have to start from scratch. Crazy. So they didn't even have a place to showcase their work, even though you know they, many of them went back to school mm -hmm. to get recertified. Yeah, right? you have to start over. Exactly. Imagine. So the Pramui Gallery was important as being a place where they could showcase their work yeah. uh, sometimes while they were still in school and some of them around that time had just gotten out of school in the United States and were you know, trying to start their careers again. And a key part of the way that they, because my grandmother, even after the gallery closed, she continued to deal art until her death a couple of years ago in 2017. And a key aspect of the way that we've done dealt with art um, has been very community oriented. So that you know, part of that involves keeping an open door so mm -hmm. that you don't you know, pay for admission, none of that. Anyone off the street can come and check it out and feel this elevating experience being mm -hmm. surrounded by art that intellectually stimulates and engages you. And also for the artist, you wanna emphasize local art and the local talent that you have, which is a major criticism I have with things like Art Basel, because sometimes you emphasize the artists coming in more than what's already there, yes. and you overlook the local they artists. They don't really push local. So they would always charge as rock bottom commissions, if any commission at all. A lot of times they sold art that they didn't take commission on, mm -hmm. just so it all went to the artist mm -hmm. in their gallery. So all of that stuck with me. So when I came here and I saw a void there, I wanted to create an art community and make it very pro artist and pro, you know, you know, community. That's amazing. Well, that being said, did you want St. Pete's campus to be mainly student-focused art, or did you want to bring in all of St. Pete's local artists to the campus? The way my mentality, because of my, my, the energy I bring into a lot of my projects is very like kind of full force sort of thing, um, but really my mentality was, I was taken aback, again, this is within my first year, so I was just taken aback by the lack that there was. So I thought all of the above was my initiative. I want student art, so we created workshops to kind of you know guide students and help them do that, including vision board workshops at the beginning of each year. That's a tradition that continues today, uh, where around January or February. A part of the club. Yes. It's a part of the program. Yes. Okay. We do vision board workshops to help students creatively and visually orient their goals for the year on you know canvases or large even sheets of colored construction paper, mm -hmm. and every choice and showing them so that they recognize that every choice they make is an intentional creative choice on some level. Yeah. When you choose between different sheets of construction paper, there's a reason you're choosing yellow over red. Yeah. Exactly, all of that matters, and color psychology is a big deal. So we yeah. tried to educate people, we would create discussions kind of styled loosely like salons you would see in Europe around art. Uh, we would do workshops that, you know, as I said, would help people you know, create art themselves, and then we would collaborate with artists in the community and have them produce works or talk about what they do. And that's an ongoing thing that I'm helping them do from the outside now that I've graduated. I'm helping them link up with people that I meet in the community. That's amazing. That's all. So do you link up with other clubs to like interact art with like psychology or? Yes, uh, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. <laughs> As it happens, we did. Collaboration was a big part of it because another thing I tried to yeah, show. Yeah, the Tampa campus is right here. Yeah. Yes, um, and also on, on the St. Pete campus, there's so many other, there's over a hundred clubs in the St. Pete mm. campus alone. Wow. So uh, many of them don't really work together. They're just kind of little siloed communities within themselves. And again, this is about creating community. So one of the things I tried to show was that art is a very flexible field that can apply to almost anything. You know, so again, if you were a, bio a biology major and you know, an accounting major, there's art applications there too. So we would team up, for example, with a psychology club, a positive psychology club that existed on campus and still does, and that was called Big Talk. Um, and basically, their goal was to help students who felt like they didn't really have a place on campus get connected to campus communities. So most activities on campus are driven by people who live on campus and people who are in their first two years. Mm -hmm. As you get further along in your college career, you get distracted, you know, not distracted, it's why you're there, you get more pulled by academics. Yeah. Um, you have jobs, you have other things. Life. But let's say you're a commuter. Let's say you're a graduate student. Let's say you're outside of that majority and you don't live on campus, but you want to be involved. It's very hard to sometimes. So this mm -hmm. group provided a place for that. So we teamed up with them. And we created an, uh, a very interesting, we've actually collaborated more than once, but my favorite one, we invited an artist in the community named Sayori Murphy. She's phenomenal. She does a lot of great work in the community with veterans, especially. And she's worked a lot with USF before. 
And we did an intuitive painting workshop that was limited uh, because we had supplies, mm -hmm. so we had to own so much to use. But I think we kept at 10 or 12 students, uh, some from each club. And basically you sat down there and you were given a large canvas, some paint to work with, and to go at it. But you were meant to feel the art, not plan it at all. Yeah. She was acting as a facilitator to kind of help us see where we are in the process and analyze psychologically where we're coming from. So the psychology element was there, the social element was there. Yeah, it's all intertwined. And of course the art. So intuitive art it was a very interesting experiment for us to use on campus. I was glad we brought that uh, to uh, USF St. Pete. And it was a huge success. We, uh, we keep getting asked about it <laughs> to do it again. Exciting. Maybe we won't. That's awesome. But like, what were the main challenges you had like when starting this club? <sighs> oh, goodness. Um, so I can say this is broadly an issue uh, with USF because I've, I've spoken to some people in Tampa and they've said this too. But And I, I want to say, but I can't say for certain, this is the, an issue in most colleges or a lot of colleges. But like I said, most people who are active on campus are people who are newer in the process, younger, and living on campus. Mm -hmm. So the reason being, of course, they're already there and they're looking to make new friends and get social. But a lot of them may not be interested in the arts, necessarily, or just intimidated by it, because the arts have definitely created uh, in the 21st century, and obviously before then, this feeling of being very elite and exclusive, which has been a hard thing for me to break through, to show that anyone can do this and all art is valid. Mm -hmm. So fighting that reputation that the arts sometimes has was a big challenge. Um, also, reaching out and getting consistent numbers of people to show up at meetings was a big obstacle as well because, again, you're just reaching those basic numbers. Yeah. And we didn't just want to target people living on campus. In some cases, the ones who might need it most weren't. The ones weren't who are there. so stressed with their jobs or so stressed with class, they needed an escape creatively in some way. It is therapeutic. So um, that was another reason we did the intuitive painting is it was like a needed thing. We always do those things around finals. So when people are kind of up to there with stress, there's the release. Yeah. So those are some challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you market to those students then who would like be commuters or live on campus? Like mm -hmm. what was your tactic? Well, there are, there's a few that we use. Yeah, you definitely have to be strategic about it. So um, it's a bit old school and, you know, 20, what was that, 2017-ish around there, 2016. Um, so you have to think about where students like that go, mm -hmm. right? They don't necessarily hang out at the same places on campus that younger students would. So for example, we have a tavern by campus. You legally can't drink if you're you know, that's, below the age yeah. of 21, so that's an easy way to kind of self-filter out other groups of people by having flyers there and spreading word of mouth there. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the cafe, the grind, which is right next door to the tavern. If you're gonna go, um, most younger students don't necessarily know about the grind because yeah. they have student um, dollars that they use for you know their meal plans, so they just get all their food and coffee there. They don't necessarily spend their own money at a cafe. So you have to think strategically that way and also consider where most graduate classes are being held That's and cool. upper level classes and put flyers there mm -hmm. in the stairs and the hallways. And then also collaboration, going back to that was a key aspect. When you collaborate with groups that tend to also self-select older students in that kind of groups, you know, we would work with them as well. Mm. Did you do the radio at all or the newspaper? Uh, we, we did not do radio, but we had developed a very, um, pro not profitable, that's a totally wrong word, uh, a very fruitful um, collaboration yeah, <laughs> and working relationship with the school paper, which okay. is really essential. They did a lot of fantastic coverage of our yeah. events. And the last show that I organized before graduating, they did a really very uh, thorough profile of it, That's even amazing. up until uh, a month ago, a couple months oh, wow. ago. So, so would they you collaborate doing great things. with USF Tampa to like get more people involved, or are you trying to stay strictly in St. Pete? Um, yes and no. So. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, they so, so cool. It's yeah. so scandalous. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just trying to think of the best way to say it without offending anybody. <laughs> St. Pete's a very art artistic mm -hmm. versus a, more of a tam. They're, they're, they have a different taste. Yeah. Right? The way that I would yeah. put it is there's very different cultures on each of our campuses. Tampa. So politically correct. <laughs> yes. Like, you are like Tampa. a totally side major be a and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Such a political way to read it. <laughs> it, it. It is true. It's not like I'm lying just to be nice, but it's a... Uh, <laughs> Because I wouldn't even do that, Very it's not worth the effort. Yes. But Tampa has, it's really fascinating because Tampa has a population 
the big, um, the biggest campus. They're substantially mm-hmm. larger than we it's are. Huge. And yet, um, I did make an effort because it was one of my goals to bridge the gaps that exist between the St. P and Tampa campuses. There yeah, has been here, tension. Hello, right. Yes. There has been tension between the two yeah. campuses, and that's well documented uh, in a lot of ways that I won't get into. But. <laughs> But um, I, I, try, I thought the arts, you know, we had so much success bridging gaps on our own campus and bringing communities together. I thought, well, why not do that across the, the bay? So I, reached, I did reach out to Tampa and I did reach out to their club, their art club there. And they have their own, you know, museum and gallery over there, you know. They, um, you know so I reached out to their CAM club, their Contemporary Art Museum Club. Uh, oh, yeah. Which is the club of their own, you know, their own museum. It's attached to the gallery that's there. Right, under. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I spoke to, you know, their, you know, some of their directors, some of their students over there. We had a really great meeting um, and it basically went nowhere. We shared some really cool ideas and um, we so weren't able to, to just, execute. just follow through. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm someone who's very big into following through, but yeah. every time I tried to reach out, I just couldn't really get any place. Yeah, but we did try. It happens. It might mm-hmm. come full circle later. Yeah, I would, the, I would love campus, so, to yeah. see that happen. Um, they did invite us to participate in a panel discussion for their art walk, and um, that ended up falling through. Uh, something happened last minute, not on our end. But um, yeah, so there, there were, you know, they showed some willingness for it, and I really hope that, because um, I know that if I was a student in the Tampa campus instead, let's say, I would. Um, love to have seen that how that would have gone differently yeah. you know um and, and creating doing over there what we did here in st pete because i see the potential there and they have so many more resources and infrastructure that st pete doesn't have that they yet. could provide yeah. family right like there's families. a lot of we are opportunities family. we are a family yeah. right go bulls <laughs> 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 have to plug that in i, I went to usf oh you yeah, do yeah. we're all yeah. fans let's do a hug i <laughs> hug uh, i graduated 2010. Oh, we can probably get this shown at US. They're very good about promoting USF oh, yeah. projects. Please. Mm-hmm. Please. Welcome to the new president. Please. Yes. <laughs> I so, miss Judy, but <laughs> I love Judy. I love her. I know. Yes, she's like the happiest I saw the, the new announcement. I was like, where's Judy? But it's another story for yeah. another time. We have Judy stickers now. They do. Like, and yeah. the advertising, um, like building, we have Judy stickers. It just says so. her face? Yes. Just yes. Her face. Oh my gosh. Are they in the butt, old school butt pins too? You should get I, pins for the back. Really back. Oh my gosh. I'll make it happen. I'll make you it happen. Yeah. <laughs> we had a long running joke at our, with some friends of mine that were in student government and uh, not so much the art club, but whenever Judy would make a major decision that involved the campuses, we would always say something to the effect of Judge Judy has yeah. spoken. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like it's a doppelganger. Right! Yeah. We I all mean, know what it. are the, it's, they're secretly the same person. I was saying, pretty, pretty much Judge it. Judy is Judy. Of <laughs> course. Like her, her alter ego. It is. <laughs> Maybe she'll do it. A little gaffle hidden yeah. somewhere. But to come back around. Yes. So, you have effectively created this art club and you've bridged the gap, well, at least attempted, it's from Tampa. Working from And you're, you seem very efficient, so like, who Thank would you. you like to follow in your footsteps? Like, we who's found, gonna run this club? Yeah, we found a, a very talented um, young lady who's going to do great things. Um, and I did um, have to think very carefully about that because I was so invested in it. I did, you know, I, did, I saw it as my baby. Yeah. So I didn't just want to go here, you guys. You know, have at it. You know, I wanted to play some role in helping to kind of facilitate right. the transition. So I looked for people who we've worked with in the past who've shown that they can handle the, the workload that it takes to make successful art happen in a community-oriented way, and someone who has you know a degree of talent, organization, all of that. And I ended up going with Grace Stocksdale. Mm. I you? love her. <laughs> okay. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grace is uh, fantastic. Excuse me, she actually works with Ann Kell, who I mentioned earlier, um, so she already has a, uh, that job. Yes, exactly, yeah, <laughs> she, they've worked together already, and, yeah. and she's someone, she's in the graphic design program, okay. which is, uh, I wouldn't call it a regret that I have, but it's something where if I could live multiple lives at once, I would consider thinking in a parallel graphic. universe what it would be like to do a graphic design, the graphic uh, design program, and we have a fantastic graphic design yeah. program at USF St. Pete. They beat us out in every ad competition. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it, and it's, yeah, they have oh, such the mm-hmm. yeah. talent there. Um, and Grace. Tampa now or work? No, they have a program at St. Pete. Oh, okay. And it's and always... what they design for advertising campaigns are better than USF Tampa advertising okay. students. And just to plug it, um, they're a much smaller program. Yeah. Much uh, smaller. And it's, it's a lot of time. The thing is, it's very competitive. Mm-hmm. 
So um, just to get into it is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that she's been able to do that, and they have workloads, and I know I'm probably gonna get some flack for this from other majors and degrees uh, that are on campus, but they are one of the most overworked and hardest pushed yeah, God, um, it's no joke. projects and on our. And oh yeah. So uh, she's proven to me on many levels that she can do it, and we've collaborated very effectively already on a couple of sh uh, events and shows we've put together. So um, she has it creatively, she has it with skill, she has it with organization. It was a bit of a no-brainer, but I did have a couple other people in mind, and we found ways to integrate most of them into the upcoming leadership. So I don't believe in this kind of like, oh, one for all, kind of doing it thing. It's more of a team effort. And I think, you know, Reagan could speak to that. We always try to keep it a team effort whenever yeah. we did things. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Grace shows that. She's not an ego-driven person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very facilitative. Does uh, Grace also have to run, because you have the club, Does, is it attached to a gallery on campus? No, no. Again, uh, we, because university is much smaller than Tampa, they don't have yet. Because <laughs> now it's, it's expanding and growing. They're just announced a brand and broken ground. So many people are dorm. moving to St. Pete. Yeah. It's booming over here. Well, they have a new dorm that they're putting in. It's oh, going wow, to implement, okay. over, uh, it's going to bring in another four or 500 like seats. Right downtown, probably. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it is a growing campus and they have signaled more development and construction is going to happen and my family also is very involved with architecture and development mm -hmm. so that's something I know a lot about and I was keeping tabs on that and we've been strategically mirroring that growth as well so we have plans for as that grows so will the club and my hope is that eventually there will be a permanent space to do art but for now we're using the ambiguity of it to our advantage yeah. uh, and using the some new spaces yeah and, and seeing also like strategically when you have an event on this part of campus, how does that compare to that side? I mean, one great thing that our campus has is it's, I believe, the only university campus in the country that can be reached by uh, land, air, and sea. Because wow. there's an airport right next to it across the street. It's there's right on the water. water. Yes. And then, of course, you can walk or drive there. That should so. be a marketing campaign itself. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so we're looking, <laughs> we're looking for ways to kind of work off of that. And, you know, it's, we've had some fun ideas. And I'm also, one of the projects I'm helping out with now from the outside is putting together a time capsule. Oh, that's uh, That kind of captures yeah. what we did in my phase of, the, of leadership in the club and now for the earliest parts of Grace's tenure. So... You know, a lot of fun things that like give it that sense of tradition, you know, so that you're part of something bigger than just one group of people. And it brings a collegiate presence to it. Exactly. Which ties into. Yeah. Perfectly cool. said. So would you say that your club has helped many students promote their own work, not only on USF's campus, oh, but... Man. Absolutely. Like around. So can you give me like an example? So I mentioned part of what we were doing, you know, I mentioned the time capsule, I mentioned the vision boards. We've done a lot of things that we have hoped um, and, and that have successfully become traditions. So that you feel that you're part of something that's enduring and that will last. It was there before you started, it'll be there after you're gone. Yeah. So one of the things that were, has been a, probably the biggest tradition, if I was to say one was bigger than the rest, is this end of the year um, student art exhibition uh, tradition that we've started, where students are encouraged to showcase work that they created throughout the year. Because we've given them a lot of workshops and resources and opportunities to create their own work. Yeah. And then they can also, they're encouraged to do so on the side. So we uh, then encourage them to find their favorites and showcase it. Sometimes we'll do competitions where other students can come by and pick their favorites and vote. Mm -hmm. And then there's a prize we'll give out. We've yeah. done that. Other times it's just been a free-for-all where we've collaborated with clubs like the Poetry Club. Mm -hmm. And we've had this really innovative thing because I love also exploring and showing the different, different things types, that art, art can be, yeah. including literary. So, for example, with the Poetry Club, we had this really cool... Um, part of our um, collaboration and that last show that I did put together um, right before I graduated where they did pocket poetry mm -hmm. and they got poem tr uh, poems they wrote and also bits of poems they created by ripping off of like books and blacking things out, so blackout poetry, and they put it into pockets of like old jeans and things they ripped out that they were, they were going to throw out. They put flowers in it and attached it to clothesline, clotheslines. Yeah. But we, it didn't fit on the ceiling. It was really funny. Because yeah. we thought, oh, it would be perfect in the ceiling. And the ceiling was too high for us to put it up. Yeah. So we thought, well, what do we do with this? The wall. And we ended up doing this really cool thing that we kind of spontaneously came up with. Well, it became this thing we draped around all the canvases to kind of yeah. unify them like a line oh, uh, with poetry see. hanging in between. Each of the that, that, I'd love to see the photos. I mean, oh, yeah, yes. for sure. I'll send you the article that they put together. It was a really... Um, I think that was my favorite show that we did, That's that cool. last one. And it's a tradition that we do now. So, uh, yeah, it does, like you say, um, give students an opportunity to showcase their own. And also, you know going into the year that that show is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of already thinking about it as you're working on different projects and thinking, you know, how do I push myself a little bit to create, to go to the next level and, you know, keep myself interested in my own art. Do you show it on campus or do you have yeah, a local campus. gallery? 
we've done little kind of walkbys, and uh, one of the other projects we did that was interesting um, was the City Rambles program that we worked with NYKL on, which was basically um, piggybacking off of the St. Pete Arts Alliance Second Saturday Art Walk, oh, and yeah. we would do um, guided tours for students. That would be so I was a tour guide. And our club um, provided the tour guides, and then it would just be average students would go on with us. We'd get on the, the looper, the trolley, and just go around to different galleries and museums and just checking out what was in the community. So we've gone to galleries. That's it's great, too. That's now. also a great idea. Long-term goal that in the few years with the plan, they would have a gallery, and then they would be one of the stops. Yeah. Ooh, on the art that's, walk. That's a Jeez. great idea. And Michael was talking about that since like <laughs> I worked with her. It's an awesome idea. That's genius. So it makes it more in, in, infused with the local. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. Definitely. Write that down. <laughs> but has your club been useful to students promoting their work outside of USF? Um, um, yeah. Well, okay, so that that's where the strategic relationship with the same, with our campus newspaper was uh, became helpful. helpful because it does do that. When we, part of building that relationship has been not just covering the events, but interviewing the students. And another relationship that we fostered that was strategic and, and very, very fruitful and helpful in the same way was with USF Connect, which is our multimedia group, which would even videotape some of our artists. So why are those two things between the school paper and the multimedia group on campus important? Everything that they do and put together covering events, they publish. Okay. So if you're someone who's, let's say, deciding, I do want to be an artist, and I do want to go out there and showcase what I've done, anyone who Googles you will find that. Okay. So it helps you professionally that way, and we know that going in. Mm -hmm. So we work with the journalists and the, you know, the multimedia people to make sure that you know, it's it covers them. Right. Well, is it the Oracle, or is it another paper? The Oracle is the Tampa one. Yeah, um, what's ours is called The Crow's Nest. Nest. The yeah. Wow, Ours, so that cool. name's so much cuter than the orange. And believe it or not, <laughs> it's so quaint. Right? It is. It's so cute. And this is a fun fact. Did you grab the crow's nest? Because <laughs> that's what I did on campus. The only way I I thought to like get updates was grab the oracle. Mm. Yeah. So it is super relevant for yeah. and professors grab it. Mm -hmm. Curators who visit on campus grab wow. it. You know, it's it's amazing because it might seem like a small campus newspaper when the it last... Makes an impact. Oh yeah, not only does it make an impact in just capturing as journalistic evidence of, of events that have happened, yeah. but also it's um, it is it, it does actually have a really large viewership that has exploded in the last couple of years. I mean, their articles regularly get seen in the thousands of people wow. online. And they have been around, talk about traditions and campus, you know, traditions. They are one of the longest running student organizations in the university's history. I want to say that they have been publishing going back to at least the 70s. Wow. So, Crazy. yeah, it is, they are respected. And a lot of the people who, who go through that program and graduate um, almost immediately are fast tracked in the top positions in journalism, working with the Tampa Bay Times, you know, yeah. the Herald in Sarasota, and several That's other like, established mm -hmm. newspapers because they are that respected. They've developed a name for themselves. Yeah, so if you're working so they do for a great that job. Paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We the love them. Nest. We love the crow's nest. Well, it's interesting because like they're getting like respect, but do you find it challenging to like talk to, I guess, older people in the art world, like because they won't take you seriously? Like, how do you feel about that? Hmm. Okay. Let's example. <laughs> let's say there's a traditional gallery like across the street who like is a little stuffy. In sync, I won't name names, but they won't <laughs> speak to you unless like Tea. you are like ten years into your work mm -hmm. like how would you approach that dynamic to get FaceTime? Yeah. yeah better <laughs> but i won't name names Good, yes. <laughs> everyone's loving here. here everyone's <laughs> loving in st pete yeah yeah so i'm not naming names <laughs> so but Whisper. let's say there's a scenario where it's not approachable mm -hmm. and they're like you're just a student so i'm yeah definitely you know and i'll go back to um i'll start by bringing back something i mentioned at the beginning which is one of our challenges when reagan asked about challenges we had that indirectly was a challenge of ours, but not just from the, I'll call it the art establishment. Mm -hmm. Not just from the art establishment's perspective, but even the way students self-select themselves out of the arts. Mm -hmm. Because they think, well, I can't do that I'm because... I'm a student. Right. So. so a major mission of our group was to show that all art is valid. Right. Um, no matter where you're at. You know, um, a lot of, and here's a key, part, a key point that we would use to both the establishment people and talking to students. If you think of some of the biggest names in art history of the 20th century, so in this case, this is within the lifetimes of many of these older establishment people, mm -hmm. right? So I would even say that within your lifetime, some mm -hmm. of the leading artists didn't even graduate from art school. No. Basquiat didn't. Mm -hmm. Warhol didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, these people became the ones who shaped modern art. 
and contemporary art, and they didn't even have a degree behind their names. And that shows, that says a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's the way we would handle that. And yes, we did deal with that. I'm happy to say not as much um, as we could have because I made a strategic, this is the political science part of me that <laughs> was thinking strategically. Um, we did make a strategic um, effort to not so much frame us on equal footing with established artists, and that becomes an ego thing that they then reject us with but rather saying, look, we're artists, we're passionate about the art, I'm sorry, we're, we're students. Mm -hmm. We're passionate about the arts, we're thinking of becoming artists, some of us are already doing it. We want to be inspired by what's already out there, we want to see what you have, uh, and we would build relationships that way, gallery by gallery. Okay. So we came from a place of respect, and I would actually, personally, me and a friend of mine, uh, Taryn Barnett, we would spend a lot of weekends just going out to downtown St. Pete and actually targeting galleries you want to establish relationships with. And like that handshaking. Yeah, and you kill them with kindness first, you yeah. know, and that's what I recommend to anybody who feels a lot of obstacles in what they're trying to do. Start by killing with kindness, don't start with aggression. Mm. Find the things about them that you genuinely like. If not, be very good at lying. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, be genuine which, about it. Right. <laughs> Uh, which thankfully we really didn't have to do because in every gallery um, you're most likely to find at least something you like oh. and we did and so we would we'd start from a place of respect and if you give them respect and kill them with kindness and show them that you're serious they will eventually warm up and thaw to you and start reaching out your hand and you know and helping and it's a relationship building it, it is really it's a relationship takes, like a couple years to yeah like if you have a goal where I'm a student and I know when I just an idea when I graduate that I want to be showing in that gallery. You have to start now. Go to the show, support their artists. Yeah. Don't just think about yourself. Like go and be genuine about supporting the shows and who's in it, and then make sure you get FaceTime with the the curator or the owner. And then over time, it presents itself. But you always have to stay active and doing work, making new work, building your resume, do, being local, like putting yourself out there, and eventually it happens. But it's huge relationship building. Yeah. It's that's, who you know. Yeah, that's such a good way to put it. We use that. that it's you strategic. Just explained. It's yes. strategy. And because that's the thing, especially when we look at, and this is a broader kind of really interesting point to make about society and culture today, mm -hmm. even outside the arts. But I would say, and within the arts, even more true than in other fields. Who you know is everything. It always has been. But now that you're thinking about the age of the internet, right? Um, that helps certainly you know when you post things on instagram and then you know you hashtag it modern art that people are looking for modern art they're more likely to find your work yeah. that way but a lot of times even with that if you don't know people institutionally who can actually host your work mm -hmm. and sell it at shows you're not gonna make a living off of instagram mm -hmm. right. so it's very important to develop those relationships these days yeah. and to support the community and a lot of times when you support it they'll reciprocate off the record you know? A school in New York, I'm not going to name names, <laughs> they have a curator, they have a panel of five curators. They didn't pick anyone they didn't know. Mm. That's how it works. Yeah. Like, there was a formal application where you paid to enter, like, you're a student, or and you went through the process, but if you didn't know or the person didn't have FaceTime, they kind of just disregard it because you have hundreds of applications. Yeah. You have to, and it's the game of the art. It's how, it, how, it's how it is. Mm -hmm. It is. And it can be bad and good, but you have to see the positives in it. And oh, just, no, it's all about networking. And the, right, and mm -hmm. the flip side to that coin, or actually not the flip side, it's the same kind of argument, but just going down the road of what you just said, you don't discover new talent that way just by sticking with who you know. Yes, that right. Is true. So outreach is very important so that you do meet new people, and so they meet new yeah, people. Yeah, and it's good for the curators to right. meet new faces so they have fresh exactly. Insight. And right. part of what would uh, so that's your leverage as yeah, an artist. Okay. Definitely. And part of another bit of leverage that I would say is you know not only are you not going to discover the next exciting thing by staying within your bubble of the same people. Um, right. But the other thing is, and it's not this is something I hesitate to say, but I'll say it just because it's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is also me kind of maybe speaking a bit from my background coming from Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very ageist culture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and a lot of times the sweet spot in the arts might be being in your 30s, 40s, and maybe 50s. But once you get like to your even. Your career is right. in a good place. But once you get to even your mid to late 50s, you know. Um, it's a very different ball game, and you a lot of times it'll the reverse will happen. You have an even harder time getting out there in some cases than someone starting out. Mm -hmm. So you can leverage your age to your advantage by saying, if you want the next big thing, you want what's fresh, you want what's new. I'm that. 
Yeah. You know, or I know people who are, and I'm in those circles and those orbits. I mean, Reagan was saying earlier how, you know, um, in my case, I've been kind of everywhere in the arts, or, and, and it's a continually evolving thing. I make a point of going out there and meeting new people. So at least I have some tabs of what's going on in most corners of the community. But if you get to the point, unfortunately, let's say I was to come across someone who I would consider to be the, one of the most talented artists I've ever met in my life, but they're 72. Yeah. There's a lot of artists who just discover their talent for art for the first time in their lives in their 60s and 70s, the late bloomers, they have a very hard time making it. Yeah. And that's a really sad thing. Yeah. Just talent, you know, really has little to do with age. It's just what you put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can be the most naturally talented person, but if you don't work at it, it can come out looking like crap. Because you have to have a brand, yeah. a name, a mm -hmm. presence of already course. established. So, um, I, it, again, it's not something that I'm proud of, and it's not something I like to do, but if you're thinking just pragmatically looking for advice, use your age as a positive mm -hmm. thing. You know, yes, I'm young, but you could be the person who discovers me. Mm -hmm. And if you represent me, then we can be making a lot of money together. Yeah. <laughs> On the contrary, a lot of like men versus women, I've noticed a lot of women in their 60s and 70s who have worked their career, like blow up. Yeah. All of a sudden, women that are 60 and plus have like featured, you know, right. huge deals mm -hmm. recently. Like the last two years, three years, I've been seeing all these women pop up, but they're older mm -hmm. and they've established. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing museum shows because of the age. It's like you blow up for women I've seen after 60. I think a lot of that has to do with the, it's, it's a process of continual rediscovering mm -hmm. of women art. And, and the reason I use that term is, you know, not to be sexist, but it's actually coming from the opposite place. I think that's the way the, the, a lot of people in the art world look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still the separation of art and the way and the standards yeah. for men and women. And that's a very real it's thing really to this day. Present. So, for example, um, someone, a, a male artist, by the time they get to their 60s and 70s, they may already feel like they've made it. Like so why keep pushing? Kind of like, yeah. But for women, that might be just the point where they're starting to be looked at seriously. Yeah, because yeah. of the the rough the work it takes and i can speak to that personally not as a woman but <laughs> but uh like growing up going back to my family some of the most uh, in fact one of i'm thinking of one person in particular there's more than one of course who i would consider to be one of the most talented artists i ever got to have the privilege of meeting in my lifetime her name was lourdes gomez franca mm -hmm. uh, and she was someone who had so many challenges in her life not just being an immigrant and not just being older and not just being a woman but she was someone who was also struggling for mental illness. Wow. And she had schizophrenia. Oh, wow. Very um, intense schizophrenia. So uh, she spilled, dynamics. right, she spilled her heart to her, onto her canvas. And it was unlike any artwork I've ever seen in my so life. so real. She is, in, and I'm not just saying it, uh, I know for a fact she's going to get a rediscovery, but it won't even be within her lifetime. Like she passed away recently, so it's going to be after her death. Wow. But it's gonna happen for sure, just because the talent there is kind of hard to, to miss. Mm -hmm. And it's the same exact story as of what you saw with uh, Vincent van Gogh. Mm. So he struggled from mental illness, wasn't taken seriously in his lifetime, but then the rebirth He's happened afterwards. Yeah. So hopefully I would like to get to the point where as an art culture globally, we, we get quicker and quicker about finding talent and, and letting people, right, recognizing it, letting them benefit from that in their lifetimes. Mm -hmm. But definitely uh, I could see that happening. That being so stuffy with the true yes. way it was. Right. right. And embracing things like mental illness rather than, oh, you're some kind of a freak for it. Mm -hmm. But rather showing for what it is, which is a truly individual inner world experience you're sharing that only you can do. Yeah, and you can show. Right. And it's, it's completely otherworldly, you know, yeah. uh, when you do that. So, and, and we need to respect that process. Right. So it, it's a very much a community thing and it, it helps all people with mental illness. It helps all, pe all women. Mm -hmm. helps all older women. When people like that do that, they just keep going at it. Like she never saw widespread success in career, but she was covered by major papers. Wow. Uh, it was just an unfortunate thing. They didn't take her seriously. And actually, another problem that isn't talked enough about in the art world, because there's a lot of artists who struggle from mental illness. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, one thing that they struggle with is they often have to rely on government programs to get their medications, for example, right? And if you make, if you become too successful with you your art, with the, you might not have access to your meds. Wow. So which one is more important? Right. Your mental health or your passion in life. That's a shame. Can you imagine having to make that choice? Uh, she had to make that choice. So a lot of her work um, had to be low. sold under yeah. the table. And my grandmother would help with that. Wow. So, I, I mean, these are the real challenges that real are dealt life with. Real life dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. But these are important topics to like talk about. Of course, so no you, one's talking about them. No one is. So 
Is that an important part of your club meetings, like to、um, talk about these things so students are aware of? It's we did we would talk about it because of course、um, the poster child for mental illness and art is Vincent Van Gogh.、Mm-hmm. You know he's a, he's proof that you know you can be very successful in it, and we would discuss it. And I mentioned some of the meetings we would do were more salon like and just discussing topics. Um, rather than workshop oriented all the time, so we would discuss it, but I wouldn't say it was a major topic we went into. It might be a regret that I have looking back that I wish we did it more, but we did do it.、Um, but、like、really, around those kinds of more sensitive things,、okay. because I was looking. My mentality at the time is: remember, we were starting from、mm-hmm. ground zero,、so、from scratch. That, yeah, you're just building. Right, you're coming at it from nothing. So my mentality at the time was. Thinking more pop culture oriented, thinking more broad, you know, pitching a big tent, you know, rather than getting really into the weeds of these very specific issues and maybe which that could take over time. Right.、Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely hoping that they end up taking up those more controversial and more, you know, difficult social topics、uh, as time goes on. I'm sure they will. But my thinking, for example, our very first meeting ever、uh, was.、Um, Around it was maybe two or three, maybe four months after David Bowie died, and he's always been a major、uh, inspiration of mine. So I made our very first meeting、uh, a tribute to him because he was so popular, and it was、yeah. the thing to you know be talking about David Bowie. So I was very interested in pop culture type things during our very first, especially that first year, yeah.、Uh, rather than these kinds of topics, but、uh, I definitely think now they're at a place where they could, and certainly me and my personal. Uh, career with the arts、um, after graduating and after my、uh, direct involvement with the club, I am dedicating time to exploring these things. Awesome. So, do you have any like upcoming shows like that you want to talk about right now? Yeah, what are you doing now? Since you mentioned it, what, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? Oh gosh. Dot dot dot. What's your、End、day? Show. What's your day consist of? Yeah, it's a day in the life. Is、um, everything kind of like whimmed? Like on the whim. <laughs> I'm a very.、Um, you seem type A. Yes. yes. Like very yes. much. <laughs> She's like yes. Very much. I know. Personal personal. Yeah. I personally experienced that. Um. Wow. Well, you're right about that. You know, I'm not gonna hide that.、Um, Give me a so, day in the life. A、mm-hmm. day in the life. That's very hard to Post do. Post college. Because, for. Even before college, and this is something that I think most college students, you know, you're still in college. I think this is something that most colleges don't think about,、um, and I think even graduates don't think about this until it's ended, which is this. We,、um, if you're thinking of yourself as the average kind of like bachelor's degree graduate, you have spent overwhelmingly most of your life in school,、mm-hmm. going back to pre-K or kindergarten. Yeah, your、mm-hmm. whole your whole social everything is a program. For as、yeah. long as you can talk, barely longer than you can walk, you've been in school. You've had your day structured for you.、Mm-hmm. So it was a very kind of groundbreaking thing for me to then suddenly have total control over what I would do with my day. So、um, basically, I've given myself a mix of what I see as structure and chaos. I give myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Just me to a T. It's that you know. I just set myself up. That's how I set myself up. Structure and chaos. It's, I just it's, like、no. the way you word things. Like, it's just nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Someone does at least. We、um, can sort of fan club of one. But, <laughs> two, I do. Thank you. We're like, growing already. It's going viral. Fan.、Um, yeah. So、um, yeah, I give myself. A degree of structure to where I have every day and every week、um, a list of things I'm supposed to accomplish.、Mm-hmm. Beyond that, it's totally free flowing. Got it. So、It'll、I live、goals. right. Yeah, I live. It's more goals and structured appointments.、Mm-hmm. So when I do have appointments, I just I put that on my phone as a reminder. I live on my reminders on my phone. Without、mm-hmm. that, I wouldn't get through my day. But、um, most of it is more free flowing than structured. So for example, now my、um, what my putting most of my time into is my father's architecture company. He is an architect, and they do.、Um, they have a very successful、What's、practice, Premway Architecture. So I'm now their communications specialist. I'm actually about to get promoted to a communications manager. Okay.、Uh, thank you.、Uh, so I basically a big part of my job is not is. As far as you can interpret the word communications, that's what I do.、Mm-hmm. So that includes publicity, PR, working with journalists, and you know, outside of school papers, into like real, you know, we have contacts in the Miami Herald, we have contacts in the Tampa Bay Times.、Mm-hmm. So whenever we do major projects, and we are,、um, thankfully, we have some very exciting major projects coming up that I can't legally talk about yet because、mm-hmm. we're still working the details.、Dang、but it. it is very exciting. I can say that we're basically working on creating、um, almost like a small city. I mean, it's in the、yeah. middle of nowhere, but it's a very exciting thing. It's never been done before,、That's、ever、cool. in the world. So、um, we have some really exciting things coming up, and another initiative that I'm working on is、um, some legacy projects to kind of honor and respect 
the uh, careers that both of my grandparents have done in the arts and in architecture, because my dad and grandfather are both architects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a generational thing, and I like that about the company. There's a, there's a sense of legacy, there's a sense of being in the family. Yeah. Um, so, and it helps me engage with an urban planning kind of community-oriented thing and get a pulse of what's happening in design broadly. So one of the things that I've done to impact the company is that I've changed the our tradition of yearly Christmas parties to being yearly Christmas parties and art shows. Oh, that's awesome. So in essence, for one day a year, we revive the Primoy Gallery. Mm -hmm. And we invite a lot of the original artists we used to work with, and we bring in fresh new art in the community so we can give them a platform. And we time it to coincide with Miami Art Week. So while all that glitzy oh, stuff's going on... Miami? No, we don't. We no longer have a gallery. That was oh, back okay, in the 70s. Okay. But um, my dad's office, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> One day, bring it back to life. I'm hoping. I believe it. I'm I hoping. see it. Yeah. Um, my it's already, ha it's already there. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. is. We just said it out loud, so now you have to do it. Of course, right? Well, like the vision what's board. that? Is it on your vision board? Yeah, I knew it. Will <laughs> It's kind of like what Michelangelo would say about, you know, when he deals with a block of marble, he already sees the finished product, he's just mm -hmm. taking away the extra. Yeah. It's like that, right? So I've created that new tradition in the company now where we do art shows every year instead of just Christmas parties, yeah. which no one else does. So it yeah. shows our roots in the arts. Mm -hmm. It's giving support to local artists like we talked about earlier during a time in Miami Art Week where a lot of the focus is on artists outside of the local art, yeah. which is fine. I totally support that, but there should be a space for local art as well. Correct. So that's we help provide that space. And we invite VIPs and make sure that they are seeing this and that these artists are getting FaceTime with these people. Mm -hmm. So the which biggest buyers. thing- buyers. Right, of course. They are about the buyers. So exactly. They're at that stage in their life where they could buy. It's a great mm -hmm. integration. Right, and let's say you're our age, right? Because mm -hmm. you've already become you know, very respected in your field. So. <laughs> You don't look it, no. but you're very respected. In your have been doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So let's say you're, you know, my age or Reagan's age, and you're in Miami and you're starting out. Uh, and I'm hoping to take this expand this past Miami. In fact, one of my goals is to first to open a second office here in St. Pete because I love St. Pete and the community here. So I go back and forth between St. Pete and Miami. But if you're about our age and you're starting out and you don't have any professional exhibitions under your name, now if you're going through that, you can say that you have. You can say you've been a featured artist at a respected kind of showing yeah. of a place. And that's important to us as well, going back to publicity and helping artists and the community and all Except that. Pay their right. way. But the biggest thing, the single biggest thing that I'm working on, aside from the stuff, because really I do that for money and also out of, you know, passion for the design and, and the family. Yeah. But, Legacy. Right. Is. Exactly. Which, you know, is nice. Purpose. <laughs> Purpose. Right. But all of that really is also just another means to an end. And the bigger passion in my life right now and for the foreseeable future is the arts. So I'm planning, and I started to talk to you a little bit about this earlier, I'm planning a series of shows, of many exhibitions that will be broken down into three phases. It is something that I know for a fact has never been done in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. I can safely say in Florida, I don't think anything in Miami, maybe if it would have happened, it would have been in Miami, but I can, I think you can even safely say in the state of Florida has never seen anything like what I'm planning. And I'm teaming up with uh, the, a close friend of mine who I had mentioned earlier with, uh, was part of our art club as well. Her name's Taryn Barnett. Mm -hmm. uh, she's also from Miami and South Florida. So we have similar backgrounds, similar passions for art. We're both coming at art from a place outside of the arts somewhat, even though I was kind of born into it. Um, I wasn't an artist until I got to college. Mm. You know, it wasn't like I took lessons on or anything like that, formal training. I found my way with a lot of other people. Yeah. So um, my degree was in political science and hers was in archaeology, I'm sorry, in anthropology. Mm. So both of us took on art history as kind of like a side thing. Mm. And it's now becoming one of our major main Passion. passions. Yeah. So this series of shows has been kind of about reaching out to the community, developing contacts, and using the contacts we do have. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely ambitious. That's it's going to be something that, I don't want to give too much away, mm -hmm. but I can tell you the name of the show. Okay. It's going to be called Blackout. So we, you can search us, we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram, uh, so if you look under Blackout oh, Art, oh, Blackout that's Art. That was. I got an invitation like one day. And Did it's you? Like, what is this? <laughs> Sketchy mystery stuff, yeah. yeah. At all, you can tell it's us right now because nothing's up yet, it's just black screens and yeah. it says stay tuned. Oh, that's cool. So mm -hmm. basically each phase will have a different series of shows within it. And again, right now we're playing for three stage, three phases over the next five years. And we're trying to make 
St. Pete go to not just the next level, but the next several levels and its prominence in the art world globally. So that we get the attention of the people, of the critics and the dealers who are moving the art community internationally. Yeah. I want St. Pete to rival Miami. I want it to be on par with what you see in Chicago, on par with what you see in Los Angeles and New York. That's amazing. It's, yeah. it's no one else is thinking on this level and, and no, doing- No, I'm with you. Yeah. I've yeah. wanted to see this for a while. And that's why I think we'd be a great team to work on I this know, together. I know, I want to act on the side. <laughs> I will give this away. Um, the stages, the three phases that we're talking about, um, each of those phases will have different broader themes. So for the mm -hmm. first phase, which right now is going to be about seven shows over two to three years, yeah. it will be exploring the art of different decades and periods of Which art. Which makes sense with the backgrounds of the mm -hmm. two founders. Right, exactly. So we are, we're going to look at different decades of art. So the very first show, which we're aiming for November, December, end of the year, mm -hmm. will be focusing on the artwork of the 1920s. Mm -hmm. So it'll have a very jazz age kind of feel to it. Um, and we're going to recapture the feeling of a abstract speakeasy. Not a literal speakeasy, but an abstract one. Yeah. So it'll be recapturing the artwork that was popular back then, it will be using today's art to reassess the culture of that time in a fresh way. It will be looking at modern themes and contemporary discussions and issues like identity, gender, sexuality, um, you know, minority communities, things that weren't talked about back then, mm -hmm. but existed. Yeah. And a lot of times you had to go underground to do private, that. very private. Right, so speakeasies weren't underground culture where it was basically a free-for-all, anything would go. So we're going to recapture that feeling of it and use it as a lens to not just look at the past, but also today. And so every show will focus on a different decade, That's leading amazing. up to That's the current cool. times. And so we are breaking it down. Some will be fusion shows of two different decades. Uh -huh. um, and basically I want each of these shows, even past the first phase and to all of these phases, every blackout show will feel like you're walking into another dimension. Mm. It'll hit all of your sensory perceptions. Yep. It'll be... That's cool. I mean, we want people to walk away with this memory of it that creates Experience. a word of mouth mm -hmm. brand that will be unlike anything else. And when it gets to be big enough, the bigger goal uh, will be that it, it travels to other cities mm. and eventually want to make a book compiling the highlights of it that will go on a book tour nationally. That's amazing. I love so, your ambition. Yeah, I love thank you. it. I expect yeah. nothing less from you. <laughs> so, blackout thank art. You. Yes. Blackout art. Follow It'll be a hashtag, too. And a hashtag. Awesome. Mm. Um, so ambitious. I'm so, <laughs> you're you. stimulating all of it. <laughs> And it's all community oriented. I'm all of so this work will be. I'm so type A too, so like, I'm like vibing right Thank now. Thank you. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so even when I we talk about it. I when you talk. Because I feel Thank like, what's the next project, man? Like, what's the next thing you're going to do? Well, you know, we, the, the, the art club was such a great, small, relatively small scale thing, but it was a runaway success. Yeah. It won awards. It was covered by different papers. Um, it and was we, just a start of It was just a club. Plan. You know, for what it was, it was relatively small scale in a small campus and a growing uh city but we did we we blew ourselves away with what we were able to achieve with yeah, that so it's right. basically sky's the limit but in the center of it all um really is this emphasis on community oriented art so we might be looking at the art of picasso in some of these shows or the art of jackson pollock or the art of andy warhol but it'll be with the local artists first and foremost i'm open to having other people from outside come in and certainly as, as these shows travel we'll look at you know other artists but it has to be community first you know, it can't become another Art Basel situation where, you know, let's say you succeed in making St. Pete on that level in the arts, but it's all dominated by outside forces. Yeah. How do you benefit from that as a, as a street artist? It's street culture, street art is a huge put, part of our, our culture street. here. Yeah, yeah. You see literally, you, you see make art on the street. Right. Right. <laughs> you make art You're on the streets like, and then you live on the streets. I'm on the street. <laughs> right? Art Basel's right there, but like I'm on the street. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I can't. You know, exactly, and you no see, bridge to gap <laughs> this situation. Exactly, which is kind of absurd, and I want it's to, absurd. I want to use that as another element of blackout that's unique as well. It'll be very conceptual oriented art. It'll be very socially engaged art. It'll be using relational aesthetics and things that you know really aren't being talked about on a local level. That you really have to go to New York, LA to see these things. We're bringing that to St. Pete, yes. but helping local artists be empowered to mm. carry it to the next level, be the, the avant garde, the cutting edge of it. Mm. Amen. <laughs> awesome. awesome. That is amazing. Like you Thank are you. amazing. Thank so, you. just to finally like close. So, what would be your advice to a student who also wants to start like their art club? But given how much ambition you have, like that's it can be like really intimidating. So, like, what would you tell them? Um, we learned. Yeah, I I've, I know that it made it seem uh, in this conversation we've been having as oh yeah we just got started like that as oh, a runaway success. It was not. <laughs> We had meetings, that David Bowie meeting, 
uh, that very first one, I think, had one or two students come out to it. It was mainly faculty, which yeah. was useless to us. We liked the support, yes. but <laughs> I mean, they, it was. I mean, also think generationally, right? David Bowie was more their generation yes. than ours, even though he's a big part of my life. Um, most, it, it didn't have the impact I wanted it to have, and as an individual event, you know, it was a great tribute to him, but. It took us a long time to reach a point where we were winning awards and really making, you know, getting out to the masses and the student culture. We weren't immediately embraced mm -hmm. because there was a lot of preconceptions and all of that other stuff, the challenges that we're mm -hmm. going up against. So you have, have thick skin. you have to have thick skin, but you also can't be discouraged either. You know, I mean, it's not just about having thick skin for the sake of being tough. You have to be strategic with your thick skin. Yeah. You have to meet your art. I mean, we were creating an art culture basically from nothing. Any art culture that exists on our campus was put there by the administration. It was not student driven, which means that it won't be sustained. Mm -hmm. Anyone can throw art somewhere, but it won't be appreciated and it won't be grown. You know, it won't grow past that until the culture embraces it. So you have to think that way too. How do you get the culture organically creating a framework so that it can be supported? So always start with where you are. We made the common mistake of going too ambitious from the start, as you can see. You know, I thought way too high when I started and then brought it back down. So the the workshops we did, the vision boards, the art shows, that stuff didn't come in right away. We thought, oh, we can just put any event together and focus on the stuff that we want to talk about and people will come. Mm -hmm. That wasn't true. Yeah. We had a lot of empty rooms at first. Mm -hmm. So we met people where they were and we gave them the supplies, them the resources, them some ideas to work with, mm -hmm. to get in touch with themselves. We collaborated with existing infrastructure. That's a big one. We talked about networking earlier. Mm -hmm. Work with all with work with and built off of what already exists. Yeah. So Don't network. The wheel. Exactly. Yeah. Network. See what's already there, and even if there's nothing there, see who's interested in the arts. So you're not just starting off as a one person. That easily could have been for me a cult of personality of people who just liked being around me. Mm -hmm. You know, that wouldn't have done anything for the arts. No. Mm -hmm. So it had to and be. It would have faded. It would have faded right after you right. left. Exactly. So which isn't the point. Mm -hmm. Right. And another thing that we did that was really strategic, which I would say to other people, if, if anyone's watching this who's not, you know, in the Tampa Bay area or in any other university that's not USF, um, I would say uh, most universities have art classes, mm -hmm. right? Speak to those professors and speak to their bosses. Have them promote your events. Have them promote your regular meetings, have them come to your regular meetings and maybe speak a little bit, do like some extra class stuff on the side that's not class oriented or feeling like a class, mm -hmm. no homework, it's just fun. Mm -hmm. Make it fun. So work with your existing infrastructure, build off of, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, make it fun and then, yeah, but don't be afraid of being ambitious either, but work up to that, don't start there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always start local. Definitely, yes. I made that mistake when I first started to, oh. I was like, New York. Miami, and I'm like, I'm in Tampa Slips right on now. shades. Yeah, I'm like, we all start that way, though, because I always feel... Big like, lights, big city. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah, I'm going to make it into Momo one day. But, like, and I... You I, might. I appreciate... I you think will. that, like, the day, like, mm -hmm. will come yes. soon for some reason. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I need time to develop. And yeah, I think that's, like, a lot of mistake that, like, younger artists make, is that, like... You need to know the people at Momo. <laughs> you need to know them. You need to have art that's worth it and, like, actually, yeah. like... Well, you have to have work. Yes. This is the better... Sorry. Interrupt, but that's okay. the better way to put it. You need to have work, work. because work that's worth it is really just um, one of my favorite. Right, that's one of my favorite quotes from David Bowie. Uh, he was a big art supporter as well. Um, one of the best bits of the advice he gave was never um, pitch to the gallery. Do work for you. Let if you feel you. that you're interested to it, you'll develop an audience. But if you're pitching it to the masses, you're just going with the flow, and it won't be quality. Because mm -hmm. there's always going to be in Warhol actually back this up too, his first attempts at pop art were basically the comic book style that Roy Lichtenstein was already doing. So he stopped because he thought Roy Lichtenstein was doing it better. Mm -hmm. So let me just do something different and do that better. You know, do your own thing, but go by your own standards and an audience will be created. Yeah. Market yourself, create you a network, but make it do yeah. work for yourself first, don't work to the gallery. And you can't truly copy another artist. You have your own way of seeing things. You can use other influences, right. but it's still your own language. Eclectic. Right? There's no other language that you have. You have your own unique voice. You have your own unique voice. And that's what makes this amazing. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. This was a pure treat. You are amazing. Thank you for having thank me. You. Not many people could tolerate this much talking. No, <laughs> it takes me for hours. We <laughs> have this on all the channels. Stay and tuned for round two. Yeah, well, we might have a second. We, we might, might have to bring you back. 
some more <laughs> blackout art. Catch that. It's hashtag blackout. Blackout art, yeah. Blackout art, and they have a Facebook page. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. Um, I think it's uh, you have to kind of there's a period in there somewhere. I'm gonna but go follow right now. If you look out for blackout art, you should find it. All right. So thank you everybody for watching. This is the Wandering Masters Art Salon with our new show, oh. um, the Artist Talks. I messed up the name with him. It's fine. Art Talks. <laughs> art Talks. Artists talk too. Uh, we, we're still debating, but that's, we're artists. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.